just about to keep going and I completely forgot about uh, recording at least this stage. So here's where I'm at. And I'm, almost, I'm just about to put the, the first row in, just in, into the soundproofing wall. That's all this wall is in here. It's just a soundproof because they've got their, their, their swimming pool pumps right there. And, and not only that, I have actually plans for this, but I'll talk about this later in another video. Uh, what I mean, I'm probably not going to render it. What I mean, I've got an idea of what I've done today. I'm going to grab that just in case I pull the bricks out. And, uh, put the stirrup in place. It's just now drying. You see what I mean? And, uh, I have to put a soft mix uh like in here but i had a bit of hard mix around the actual stirrup itself to make that really strong i had to bond that in place but after that put rubble and then a really soft mix because like the expansion and contraction we, we don't want cracks to, to form and, and problems to occur and the top will get um rendered over and screeded up and and all that stuff but, uh, so i'll talk about that later the reasoning about that so, it's, it, you can't have it because of you know, temperature differences. So, for example, that outside wall will see the sun. That inside wall will never see the sun. So you've got temperature differences possible here. They'll be covering over this, but that's not the point. You've got to make sure this doesn't crack. So every bit of cement that I have poured between that, just over the top of the limestone rubble, is a very, very, very soft mix. I'm talking like 15 parts sand to one part cement very soft mix pretty much the same as what you have at the base of your bathtub because of uh, expansion and contraction reasons you've got it it's got a bit uh, uh, it's got to handle that temperature difference and temperature change if that was a hard mix the same as mortar or even like, like concrete poured into there when that was to heat up and that doesn't you'll end up with a fracture will we'll, we'll course through your wall and like uh, I have this young lad who jumped on this channel trying to tell me all about it turns out he's 15 years old and uh, he's trying to tell a 50-year-old man who's been building retaining walls for longer than he's been alive for how it is. Fascinating. <laughs> but yeah, the answer is yes. Limestone chunks are inside the wall. And limestone is fantastic for uh, absorption, of uh, the heat change, which is why like, the best wine cellar you could ever make is something underground with limestone cladded walls, which is the best wine cellar because it keeps the most consistent temperature doesn't change in shape, size, or anything, and it absorbs. It even absorbs microwave frequencies, like your mobile phone. So the limestone's fantastic, which is why I've gone there in this circumstance. This here, like in terms of the uh, the height of the wall, uh, I've got it almost right. It is a pinch out right to this end here. It, uh, this wall here is about three millimeters lower. Than that one, I don't think over the course of. Uh, I don't think you're gonna pick it. Anyway, she's not quite perfect. I'm a little bit pedantic, but I kind of like things to be perfect. But you can see she's a pinch higher at that side, but uh, I don't think it's gonna matter. Anyway, that's where we're at. It's uh. I could do this as an upload video as to, hey, how's the wall coming along? But I'm just about to mix uh, another batch and then I'm going to put the first row in. Getting the first row for me is crucial. As long as I can get this first row absolutely perfect, the rest of them's a piece of cake. If you stuff up the first row, then the kind of the rest of them makes a bit of a nightmare because you're, you're constantly re-correcting your mistakes. So I'm going to spend time just getting the first wall in place and correct. And then the rest of them, like you're off and racing, not a problem. Anyway, that's where we're at. Ta-da.